Welcome to our lecture online. So here's another question from one of our viewers. We have an object with a certain amount of mass which is revolving around a circular path at a velocity v sub naught, that's the magnitude of the velocity, and we want to know what is the impulse on the object that revolves through a quarter turn. So what is the impulse? So first we need to figure out what an impulse is. Well, the impulse can be defined in two ways. It's equal, it's equal to the force times the amount of time during which the force acts. And if the force is not constant, of course, that requires an integration. Or it can be defined as the change in the momentum. Remember that momentum is indeed a vector quantity. So that means that the impulse is a vector quantity as well. And so the change in momentum, since momentum is mass times velocity, if velocity is a vector quantity, it's the change in m times v. Since m doesn't change, it's the mass of the object, it can come out, the, the change sign, and so we can say that the change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we take the difference in the velocities, notice that they are vector quantities, and we multiply the times the mass. Now we're taking a simplistic look at this. We're going to do a more general uh, approach on the later video. But here, let's assume that we start in this particular location, and then a quarter, quarter turn later, the object is up here, moving to the left, where here the object is moving upward. So, how do we define the momentum, the change in momentum? How do we define the impulse? Well, let's go ahead and find the initial velocity and the final velocity. Notice that this is the magnitude of the velocity, and that doesn't change. So, the magnitude of the initial velocity is still v sub naught, and that's still v sub naught over here. The speed doesn't change, just the direction changes. So, how do we define the initial velocity? Notice there's only velocity in the y direction and not in the x direction. So, we can write that v initial here is equal to zero in the x direction and plus v sub naught in the y direction. Notice it's plus v sub naught because it's the positive y direction. Here, we can say that v final is equal to, well, we have a negative v sub naught in the x direction, negative v sub naught in the x direction, and plus zero in the y direction, because there's no component in the y direction. Now we're ready to calculate the impulse. So the impulse i is equal to the mass, that's a, of course a vector quantity, times the final velocity, which is right here, so it would be minus v sub naught in the x direction, plus zero in the y direction. And we subtract from that the initial velocity, which is zero in the x direction, plus v sub naught in the y direction. And then we simply have to add those vectors together. We add like vectors together, so that means that the impulse is equal to the mass times minus v sub naught minus zero, so that would be minus v sub naught in the x direction, and zero minus v sub naught in the y direction is a minus v sub naught in the y direction. So in this particular case, we can say that the impulse is equal to this. Now, that's a very special case where we start from this position and we end up in this position. But what would we do if we could start from any position and move through any sort of angle. Well, we could start with a 90 degree angle and then we could reduce it to any sort of angle. What would be the impulse then? Well, that's a more general case. Let's try to approach that one on the next video. But in this video here, the principle should be clear that again, the impulse can be calculated by calculating the change in the momentum and realizing that these are vector quantities. So we do have to take care of the direction of the velocities and that is how we do it. <laughs> <I'm falling asleep. laughs> All right, let's uh, try the next one. That was 24.